Frogs, toads, salamanders, and Sicilians all belong to the amphibia. Amphibia translates to double life, a reference to the amphibian's life cycle, which occurs partly in water and partly on land. Although most amphibians live this double life, a few complete their cycles entirely on land or entirely in water. Our study of the frog's life cycle begins with sexual reproduction. A male entices an egg-carrying female to mate and stimulates her to release her eggs into the water. The male overlays these eggs with a cloud of sperm. Frogs and most other amphibians reproduce through external fertilization. The fertilized egg, called the zygote, contains all the fat and proteins required for the early phase of frog development. Whether laid on land or in water, the egg must remain moist during development. The egg readily loses water through its delicate envelope if its surroundings are dry. The single-celled zygote divides many times to form an embryo with thousands of cells. As it develops, the embryo elongates and forms a tail bud. After embryonic development is complete, the embryo hatches and becomes a larva, also called a tadpole. The tadpole has external gills for respiration. These external gills will disappear as the animal continues to develop. The tadpole will transform itself in a process called metamorphosis, which is controlled by hormones. During metamorphosis, the external gills are replaced by internal gills and hind legs begin to appear. Virtually every organ in the frog changes and becomes suitable for life on land. Metamorphosis continues as front legs appear and the internal gills are replaced by lungs. The tail begins to be resorbed. The mouth of the larva widens and develops an insect-catching tongue. The tadpole's gut even shortens, preparing the animal for the transition from an herbivorous diet to a carnivorous diet. After a complete metamorphosis takes place, the adult frog is specialized for life on dry land. When the frog reaches reproductive maturity, it completes the life cycle by producing a new generation of frogs. If we look at a cross-section of an embryo of the frog Xenopus, we can see that at this point it is a ball of cells with a fluid-filled cavity. The cavity is the blastocele, and the embryo is currently in the blastula stage of development. A blastula contains large yolk-filled cells at the vegetal pole and smaller cells at the animal pole. The three colors represent the three tissue layers that become defined early in embryogenesis. Yellow indicates endoderm. Red indicates mesoderm, and blue indicates ectoderm. At the beginning of gastrulation, a few surface cells, called bottle cells, move into the interior of the embryo, followed by other surface cells. We can track the movement of cells into the embryo if we add dye to a few surface cells. The movement of cells into the embryo creates a lip, called the dorsal lip, over which sheets of cells continue to move inside. At the same time, the ectoderm extends around the embryo surface in a process called epiboly. As gastrulation proceeds, a cavity, called the argenteron, forms while the blastocele progressively shrinks. The argenteron is the primitive gut and is completely surrounded by endodermal tissue. The endoderm at the roof of the cavity originated from the outside of the embryo. The cavity is continuous with the outside via the blastopore, which eventually becomes the anus of the animal. As the ectoderm extends around the embryo, another set of bottle cells forms. These cells migrate into the embryo, and other surface cells follow them, creating the ventral lip of the blastopore. By the end of gastrulation, the ectoderm has surrounded the embryo. Endoderm lines the inside, and mesoderm lies between the two. Additionally, the fates of specific regions have become determined. The endoderm gives rise to the digestive and respiratory tracts and associated structures. The mesoderm gives rise to the skeleton, circulatory system, muscles, excretory system, and most of the reproductive system. The ectoderm gives rise to the skin, sense organs, and nervous system. This sequence shows early embryonic development in the frog Xenopus. Early cell divisions are followed by gastrulation, 
then neuralation, which involves the formation of the precursor to the vertebral column.